A startup is a seed. You can plant this seed and you water it a bit, but the water goes away, so the plant doesn't grow. Then you find a fertile soil and you put this very same seed in that fertile soil. You water it a bit and suddenly it flourishes and grows and it becomes a beautiful big plant. For Tiger, that's what we found in Singapore. We found that ecosystem, we found that fertile soil that once you put a bit of more of water, say investment or love, <laughs> uh, then it's just, it just grows. So if I would think about leadership within the scene itself, I think there are two key things I would like to highlight. First and foremost, the ability and willingness to embrace failure. So if you're in early tech space, there's genuine, generally a case where failure is often seen more often than the norm rather than the outlier itself. The second point itself is the ability for us to attract talent and also inspire talent. You really need some of the top minds coming together to look at different ways to resolve a problem. Leaders of tech companies are expected to constantly be aware of what's at the forefront of innovative developments and be willing to take risks in terms of integrating these things into their value offerings. On the other hand, they are dealing with clientele or potential customers that, are, that still can be very resistant to change. And it's our job to manage that timeline. Change is uh, it's not optional in our society anymore. I mean, change is the norm. We raised a bit of money and we went to the US uh, two years, 2013, 2014. Catastrophe, uh, we didn't sell a thing, uh, but we learned a lot. And then we look at the landscape and we realize Singapore is where we needed to be because it's where growth was, where opportunity was. We're blessed to be in a field where really there is no safe path, right? We are constantly pushed to explore and be bold in our ideas and, and uh, efforts. We actually don't have a definitive blueprint of what the future quantum computer will look like. In our field of research, uh, we require a lot of creativity uh, and a lot of courage to keep exploring new avenues and new ideas. Uh, and if we're afraid to fail, then we'll become too risk averse to try new ideas. It's very important to lead, lead with a vision because that uh, enables the whole team. And then I think second tier is really um, to foster, constantly foster strong talent uh, in the workplace. Uh, everyone's fighting for talent because we, without good talent, one, once again, you can't uh, expand what, what just a few leaders can think of together. Execution is really everything. In the quantum computing industry, the competition for talent is definitely one of the most important issues. The world has a lot of talent being caught and being taken up by different supranational powers. The willingness of this talents coming together to work towards a common vision itself, given the progressively more fragmented world. I think this is something that we need to resolve. If you look at the input factors that go into the assessment of our ranking on the GII, we do very well on several fronts. These are political stability, the effectiveness of policy making, how sophisticated our markets are and the ease of doing business. The Singapore government is the main entity that has built up capabilities around, around these, these frameworks that allow us to stay competitive in the innovation space. Singapore walks the talk. The government has a plan to nurture and grow deep tech, AI companies and startups in general. And then we found all that infrastructure before us and it was fantastic. We've moved towards a global ecosystem which has no choice but to be open and collaborative. That is the future of, of not just technology, but the ecosystem in general. And technology is really the enabler. Deep technology innovations lie at the crossroad of massive shifts such as resource scarcity, global climate change, changing demographics and aging population. I would encourage all leaders in tech to not just think about the technological feasibility of what they're working on, but also the social usability and the moral desirability of what they're looking to roll out to market. I often believe part of Singapore's success story has been the agglomeration of a variety of factors that have driven us forward in the last 50 years. Similarly, in the space of innovation itself, it's about the agglomeration of talent, interest, problem statements, agglomeration of capital that's able to push some of this initiative forward so that it doesn't reside in the business plan, but individuals are able to bring it to the next stage. Events like Switch itself fundamentally provide an avenue for folks to come together to have all these various conversations and with it itself, we are genuinely hopeful 
that it will fix things one step forward. Events like Switch are extremely useful for us to make a connection to people outside our immediate communities and it also allows us to engage with the potential end users who, who are actually the target or the community that we're building the technology for. I think it's a wonderful thing. It brings around 60,000 people together, uh, gives us the opportunity to share uh, what we've done, what we have achieved over the last uh, year, to meet people, to get ideas, to share ideas. It builds the industry, it builds the ecosystem, it creates a lot of value. I, sometimes I think I would have wished to be born now rather than you know, 45 years ago because I think it's going to be extremely exciting what is ahead of us.